if in our push calculator we enter the full 54% and we're wrong, that is going to markedly change our results. So I wanted to throw this guy's, um, throw a few of these scenarios at you to let you know how how your equity then changes in these given situations. Let's look at one more actually. Let's look at uh, somebody who came in and really three bit squeezed this light with a queen nine offsuit. <laughs> He flops top two and has 64% equity. So again, here we can't be giving ourselves the full 53, 54% equity for our draw because the ace of the king isn't going to help us. And again, um, let's say this guy went, uh, made a more respectable, honest, say, three bet squeeze with a king queen suited. And again, we can't count our king outs here because they're blocked. Any king that comes is going to give him top two and it's only going to give us top pair. So again, we're at a situation where we're not at 15 outs but at 12. And this is how uh, these big draws can also, if, I mean with good players, they know about these good draws, or these big draws, and they know how to push them on the flop too and on the turn. Uh, they're also aware of the equity swings that we covered in great detail yet again, guys, in the Poker Math subseries. Please see that again if this isn't clear. Be aware that if somebody is on that king, queen, queen, ace kind of hand, that you know our ace king is. Uh, we got to discount some outs here. We can't give ourselves a full 15. Let's look at this one. This is maybe a bit surprising for some of you guys. Let's say he raises with the hand we just analyzed. Ten jack suited in position. Made a three bet squeeze. Ten jack suited in position against an open razor arm mid position cold call and then he comes over the top for full 16 big blinds open razor folds we then call flop comes queen nine four suited two suited again which by the way he doesn't have the suits for so nine ten jack queen has an open ended straight draw so that's going to put us um, pretty decent here at 70% because he hasn't hit yet and he's also on a draw. Let us look at maybe a potential turn card. Right. Wow. Excellent. We hit one of our we hit one of our 15 outs that we gave ourselves. Ah, shit. <laughs> what, what happened? We just hit top pair, top kicker, and all of a sudden we're 80% behind the guy. Well. Guess what? Jack-10. Relatively light 3-bet squeezed you. Flopped the open-ended straight draw and completed on the turn giving you top pair, top kicker and you think you may have a big hand. Guess what? What is a big hand? Not top pair, top kicker. <laughs> I was sorry for beating this one in but it's the only way to really do it. Top pair, top kicker. Over pairs. Very, very vulnerable not a big hand. Big hand is two pair or better. Again, I'm, it's a real gift to you guys. I can't tell you how much I've lost on this kind of crap. Not seeing the signs and playing it incorrectly. Here's a good spot to play for pot control. I mean, if he pushes, of course, the best move this guy can make right here with the completed open in a straight draw after our, after our probable bet into that on the turn is to push. Get it all in right now at 80% equity because he didn't want to see that third spade for sure. And he could just call, wait for a non-spade to hit and hope that we'll bluff or let's say actually with a king we'll think we're good here and make a value bet. And then you know he just calls us down and get it, gets it all in, in yeah with that line. Also possible. Alright, on the flop we're 70% Let's look at this one. Wow. We still got our big, relatively big draw. But look at that equity swing. Look at that equity swing. He hits his jack. Still got the open in a straight draw. But he's paired now. He's got a made hand. We're still on a draw. Our equity dropped to 32% from a flop 70%. So yet again, with that big draw, where's a good time to push? On the flop or on the turn? Yeah, on the flop. Getting it in on the flop is a good idea here. Again, 
we can't know that he's on the jack 10 and of course if he is let's say on the nines suited <laughs> uh, yeah yeah we're again at 25 percent for a flush draw and in this case the four of spades would make our flush and have a look at this we're like oh, excellent we hit the nut flush we hit the nut flush with the four of spades no we didn't hit anything the board paired what we hit was called setting yourself up for extreme reverse implied odds <laughs> as we covered again in the poker math series this out this four of spades must not be counted in your total outs count of nine that four you gotta take completely out of your equation you gotta give yourself only eight here if you put the guy on the set pretty much yeah pretty much that to the river and so, yeah, a lot of guys say, say, oh, fantastic. Nut flush. Huh. You never have a nut flush on a paired board. You have a strong hand, but you have an extremely beatable hand. And if somebody plays back at you when you have that flush on a paired board, knowing that most players, especially novice and recreational players, freeze up on three suited boards, when you do then get action versus your... <laughs> you know considered nut flush and you don't think that this guy is on the the full house be ready for a shocker I mean okay you do have guys who call four or five suited and all of a sudden trip up and think they're good also possible but these I mean from both sides of the table this is a hell of a good spot to bluff maybe I've got the four maybe I've got the set of nines or queens maybe I've got my completed flush who knows these are the kind of boards that you can really get creative on and these are the kind of boards that you should also be very very careful on because you have a beatable hand here even with the nut quote unquote nut flush okay, paired board means there is no nut flush there is simply a flush <laughs> a very beatable flush and if you're ready to stack off with your flush versus a paired board well good luck I hope you're not playing it too high of stakes I want to go back to what we were just looking at uh, with the push calculator and then take this scenario here where we have our ace king of uh, spades and yeah the respective villains potential potential hands on that flop just to show you how that changes in the calculator itself same scenario just recap that small blind big blind open razor we call for four guy three bets us light to sixteen one call two calls and flop comes, open razor checks, we check behind, and the three better, the squeezer, makes his standard C bet of two thirds pot size, which is in this case $33 or 33 big blinds. Open razor folds, and again we have this 2.5 to 1 odds, as you always will when somebody bets two thirds pot into you and you need 29% equity to make that call. 25% for our equity here and his fold equity if we assume that he never folds his trips or whatever we're gonna lose 30 bucks in the long run with our assumed monster draw we thought we had 15 out we didn't have but 8 and the guy had a redraw to a full house so there you go <laughs> whoopsie yeah miscounted outs can be catastrophic especially when super big stacks say super deep stacked uh, it's just whatever for example purposes give ourselves 160 remaining yeah yeah all of a sudden <laughs> your expected value drops markedly but of course when you're pushing that big fold equity will go up let's look at a, a situation where again we flopped our over cards as we will on 66 percent of flops with the ace king and our flush draw but the guy had queen king as we had seen so again around 12 outs and here for 12 outs right at yeah 44 45 percent equity and yeah even if this guy never folds already at 45 percent we're in the green and the more he folds the more we win so at this point if um, if he never lets go of that top pair ever we're gonna win 12 bucks in the long run but that means in the long run guys and if you're playing if this is your entire bankroll for example you don't want to go bet in the farm on 45 percent equity here in this in this scenario 
Uh, you need to always adhere to bankroll management and again adjust accordingly but um, if you're playing where you have 15 to 20 to even 30 rebuys you can make these kind of pushes with without any worries because you know you're winning money in the long run if you're shaking in your boots every time you make an all-in push because you're playing over your means then yeah you're not playing yeah I mean you're gambling you're not you're not a player at that point you're a gambler so be be clear with that distinction and always do it here to bankroll management so so that you can make these kind of positive EV moves without having a stroke or heart attack in the process. <laughs> All right, let's say for example that the guy didn't flop the set, he didn't flop the top pair blocking one of our over cards and we have the full 53% equity sitting very pretty at 29 bucks for our flop push even when he never folds and let's say he folds maybe 30% of the time yeah, I mean that's just huge EV given an effective stack of uh, 100 big blinds and in this case the EV the the monetary amount is one to one with our big blind count you can break down any of these concepts into multiple videos they're very very profound very very complex uh, especially as you move into the higher limits but you as recreational potentially novice players and even some seasoned players will hopefully have gotten a lot out of that because now you will have seen pretty much everything that a very good very educated player can throw at you. Uh, you've also seen the mathematical background for um, yeah, the reasons for such plays. You've seen the odds that you're both getting and giving. Uh, you've seen different lines of play again here with, uh, with this video different pot manipulation strategies when you should play your hands fast, betting and raising, re-raising, when you should slow play them, uh, i.e. on non-connected dry boards, especially in Texas Hold'em, in Pot Limit Omaha, I almost never slow play because the likelihood of somebody having flopped uh, sets is just way too high and of course when that board pairs your uh, previously uh, monster straight or flush draw and or completed or flop uh, monster straight uh, without a redraw to the full house is very very vulnerable against again flop sets and many other potential holdings so pot limit Omaha almost never slow play and hold them of course it works uh, be very careful when you are on two suited boards and connected boards and you can change it of course from time to time where you don't protect on the flop especially maybe in heads up or, or three way pots where you don't think it's very likely that your opponents are on flush draws you can also in that position play slow and then make a move on the turn both in and out of position that's also possible yeah always again I'll just say that one last time <laughs> big hand does not mean over pair big hand does not mean top pair top kicker big hand does not mean any top pair especially full ring this also applies to six max and okay and, and heads up yes top pair is there's an adage of course top pair in heads up play just you and another opponent is the nuts now, there is that adage so the fewer opponents you get the more likely it is of course that he or she will have missed and when you do have that top pair over pair it's also very strong in general however <laughs> even in heads up play and uh, when you get action against a non-creative kind of rocky kind of player be ready for a real shocker if you if you play on with your top pair over pair as I just illustrated with multiple examples of course top pair hands and over pair hands are very good very often at a showdown but you don't want to be overplaying them and you very often want to play them for pot control even with this if you if you properly comprehend everything that I've explained to you here in the first two videos of this sub series you'll be light years ahead of all your competition and that we want to solidify then in the coming third video where we'll put all this theory into practice for you again this is Dylan hope you enjoyed it hope it was very useful and I'm looking forward to working with you here in this third and final video where we'll get into quite a few examples for you guys to really bring these concepts home and uh, illustrate exactly where and how you can utilize them against various opponents in your play Till next time, all the best and best of luck at the tables.